410 amp hours. Hey guys, just got this in. This is the 12 volt, 410 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Power Queen. That's a whopping 5,428 watt hours of power, making this the largest 12 volt battery we have reviewed thus far on this channel. This battery features a 250 amp BMS, making it capable of 250 amps continuous charge and discharge current. Many of you guys have been asking in the comment section to see some of these larger batteries, so hopefully this video will get some of your questions answered. This battery is a beast. It measures in at 24 and one half inches in width, 11 and one half inches in depth, and approximately eight and three quarter inches in height, and it weighs in at 81 pounds. This battery is built in the standard plastic case we've seen on most of these batteries. We have these nylon strap carry handles on the side. We have the standard epoxied in terminal studs. We have a serial number of the battery. And the hardware that came with this is fairly standard as well. We have the four M8 sized bolts with flat washer and lock washer. And then we have the plastic terminal covers for added safety. The instructions and documentation came in this nice plastic pouch. We have a quick start guide with some precautions and safety information. And we have a very well written user's manual. It's pretty similar to some of what we've seen before. So here are the exact measurements of that case. We have the specifications page here, 410 amp hours, as we've said, 12.8 volts nominal. Uh, the recommended charge current is 82 amps. We have 250 amp BMS. That gives us a maximum continuous charge and discharge of 250 amps and a surge rating of 500 amps for up to five seconds. This battery can be installed with the post facing upward. And we have an explanation on the various stages of the lithium iron phosphate charge profile recommended charge parameters and settings for your charge controller. You can connect four of these batteries in series for up to a 48 volt battery system. And we have some procedures and descriptive information here for the various parallel and series connections you can make on your battery pack. Look how tiny this charger is compared to the size of this battery. All right, so our battery charging has completed. And like usual, I charge this battery using my Ames Power 12 volt lithium iron phosphate charger. Uh, that is my recommended charger for these types of batteries. People ask me that question quite frequently, actually. Uh, the capacity test will be mostly the same. We have the Batrium shunt. We have a display showing voltage, amperage, wattage, discharged amp hours, and discharged watt hours. I've got a 2000 watt inverter here on the side. I'll be using the standard space heater for my discharge load. So I did end up turning the space heater down to low. You see we are pulling 930 watts or 71 amps. And our test concluded at 413 amp hours. Whoa, look at that. Let's get some of this foam out of here. Look how this thing is built. And this BMS does look similar. We've seen it before, or at least a similar version of it. And what I always enjoy looking at with these batteries are the details. For example, they even thought to stick these little pieces of foam here uh, between where these bus bar screw terminals are. And they have that in both the positive and the negative side over here. How to safely get this thing out? That's the question here. It's like wedged. Oh, there we go. All right, so the wiring we have on this battery, the positive is a pair of number six gauge silicone insulated wires. The negative consists of four runs of number eight gauge silicone insulated wire. There are four runs from the battery to the BMS. And then there were another four runs from the BMS to the terminal stud of the battery. This is a lot of fun to just take a step back and look how well built this is. These are actually GFB cells, 206 amp hour GFB cells. And you can see the QR there if I can hold this still. They are model number 0ALCBA6210000D. So these batteries are wired in groups of two, and then those groups of two are wired in series to give us the 12.8 volt nominal. Since these are 206 amp hour cells, that means this battery pack actually has a capacity of 412 amp hours. Taking a look at the battery connections, these are thick pieces of aluminum and they are laser welded down to the posts of the battery. And our micrometer is showing them at 2.1 millimeters in thickness. The battery pack is held together with two of these plastic packaging straps. They are on there with a good amount of tension, holding the batteries fixed in place. Additionally, I do very much like seeing these corner pieces here, which are preventing the strap from biting into the cells. These cells are separated with a thin layer of paper. I don't know if you can see it there on camera. It looks like that battery or fish paper, people call it. The cells are all lined up perfectly straight. I don't see any signs of bloating, not even the slightest sign anywhere. So uh, I do feel confident that these are brand new cells based on the way they look and the capacity test we ran. 
Our battery leads are run with some nice quality wire here. This is some harder insulation, and I see it says AWM on the insulation. Uh, they are routed up the center fairly nicely. Another zip tie or two might have held them a little bit better. And we can see our positive and negative connection. There is one piece of aluminum going directly across the two posts. Then it splits into two L-shaped brackets to come up, and there is one positive conductor connected to each of those L brackets. The negative is done the same way. We have two of the eight gauge wires going to one ring terminal and two going to the other ring terminal. All of these screws are nice and tight and they also are covered with this white silicone. Taking a closer look at our BMS here, uh, it says Power Queen. It does appear to be a VIP brand based on the model number right there. And we've seen these VIP BMSs in their batteries and a number of other batteries at this point. We have the five balance leads come up to the connector here. Uh, additionally, we have a thermal switch coming off of the BMS that is silicone glued down to the battery itself. And you can see this is indeed a thermal switch. It is not a temperature sensor. So this one is a 75 degrees Celsius switch. So at 75 degrees Celsius, this thing will tell the BMS to stop charging or discharging for high temperature protection. This does not have any low temperature protection built in. That's perfectly fine. It is not advertised having low temperature protection. Taking a closer look at this BMS here, there is a nice layer of epoxy board that's separating the BMS from the battery. There are two, four, six screws, which I've already removed. We're gonna see if we can get this heat sink off. So we see a nice layer of thermal. I still don't know what this stuff actually is. If any of you guys know what this thermal padding stuff is, uh, please let me know. I'd be very curious to learn what that is. Look at all those FET transistors. So here's the part numbers if you're curious. I am not going to read them off. I think you can see them clear enough. And here on the side, we can see this is a VIP brand BMS, as we've already said. And this particular one was built November 15th, 2021. And I did notice too, on the other side of the BMS, there is a second thermal switch. And if you look carefully on the inside, you can see those leads route straight up the center of the FET transistors. So we have one thermal protection switch on the battery itself, and we have one thermal protection switch on the BMS. All right, so the last step here is we're going to verify that the high temperature protection of this battery works. You can see we've got the power supply here charging at 8.9 amps. Positive is going up to the main positive of the battery. The negative is going to the P minus side of the BMS. All right, and there we go. The battery has shut down. Uh, I lost track of how long that was. I believe it was about 30 to 40 seconds, uh, but the high temperature protection does work perfectly. Now we'll cool the sensor back down and verify it starts charging again. And there we go, it turns right back on, back to nine amps. All right, so there we go, the 12 volt, 410 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Power Queen. These batteries seem to have improved a lot over the years. You know, they're picking much better cells, they're doing better cabling, better BMS, so it's just not the issues that we used to see before. Um, I have absolutely nothing negative to say about this battery at all. One of my favorite aspects of this battery are the GFB brand cells. These batteries sell for $1,539. They also ship free to the United States. And there is a discount code down in the video description. That is a holiday discount code, so I'm not sure how long it will last. And just a big thank you to Power Queen for sponsoring this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.